Thank you, Lynette. Thank you very much. Thank you to my good friend, Woody. Good evening. Welcome to the enlightened parish of St. George, to the constituency of St. George North and South. Over the past 48 years, this parish has been good to the Barbies Little Party and have shown the way forward. Indeed, I remember Market Hill. It was at Market Hill that the great Henry Ford felt that Barbies had lost its way. So Louis Tull, he was the man, he is the man. He's the conscious of the Barbies Little Party. He has represented this constituency, St. George South, for 27 years. And it's 27 out of 48, if you count 1966. The Barbers Little Party has re represented St. George South for more than 27 years. Whereas we have done a little better in the, in the North. We have represented 30 years. And we've got to be thankful to the Barbers Little Party. We have a lot to shout about. And in the last general election, we want to thank the people of St. George North and South for electing Dwight and myself with resounding majority. And I am sure that Dwight has assured me that he is going to beat Louis Ricard. <laughs> Dwight has assured me this. Two Fridays ago, two Fridays ago, I happened to attend the funeral of Cyril Walker. May his soul rest in peace. And I sat next to Sandy. And Sandy asked the question, how did we get in this position? How did we get? And I think Sir Lloyd's statement is very pertinent. And I have done some research. And I want to say that after 14 years of economic stability and good governance, Sir Lloyd's statement must be relevant. And we must, at some stage, invite Sir Lloyd to this, to this platform <laughs> to share his experiences. And I said to Sir Lloyd, I said to Sir Lloyd, Sir Lloyd, one of the problems that you must recognize is that your beloved party does not listen. They do not learn lessons. They do not remember. And of course, they do not understand the policies of good governance. And they believe strongly in your philosophy, the policy of like it or lump it. <laughs> and, you know, Sir Lloyd, Sir Lloyd must read the manifesto of the Barbados Labour Party, and I'm glad that my friend Anthony Wood touched on it. And in that manifesto, because I don't believe many of you have read it either. In it, we have pointed out why the bill the DLP failed. Why they continue to fail, and why they will continue to fail, not only here in Barbados, but every document abroad have pointed the fact that the Democratic Labour Party have failed Barbados and have failed it miserably. But you know, the Barbados government did not want Sandy around because he asked too many questions. How did we get into this mess? What the question to ask, to Sandy asked. After 14 years of good governance, that's what he said to me. After 14 years of good BLP government. But you know what he, he then did to Sandy? As soon as the Democratic Labour Party came to office, they banished Sandy to China. <laughs> they banished Sandy to China. They did not want to see him around because he was asking too many questions. And we, when you look at the records of the Barbados Labour Party's 14 years, we saw st stable government. We saw, as the net pointed out, a government that brought new ideas to the fore, the Fair Trading Commission. 14 years of growth, 3% growth every year. Savings and investments were at record level. Foreign exchange reserves were over 2.5 billion by 2007. And we never had a thought of devaluation. Inflation was at 4% annually. Government fiscal house was in order. Our 
our current account was in surplus. And I'm saying to you that the fiscal deficit that you now talk about were within international standard of prudence. Our policies helped to reform our tax system. The economy was strong and capable of giving decent wages. The social partnership was strong and vibrant. There was an active program to eradicate poverty. Our energy program was going well. The tertiary education program, there was no problem with, one, with people going to university. We talk about one graduate per household. The fight of HIV and AIDS started under this, par this party in earnest. Crime and violence had reduced to low level. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, good order and general env the environment prevailed. Good order, good governance prevailed. Why did the people change in 2008? Why did it change? People had money in their pockets, yet they changed. Why? DLP propaganda again. The DLP came and told the people in 2008 that it was going to be better governance, that they're going to kill the fatty calf, and you thought that you were going to get peace. Everybody thought they were going to get peace on the fatty calf. What has happened? After 2008, we saw that the road, the DLP adopted a road which was least travel. This is the point. After 2008 election, Thompson adopted a new road, a road that we never traveled. And he told persons not coming to, Bar coming to Barbados out of the Caribbean. You remember that speech? He said to them that ever so welcome, wait for a call. He got on the floor of parliament and fair contractors after contractors. This is what Thompson did. And he thought that he was high and mighty. But he did not talk about the economy. It was he who introduced the concept that social order was better than the economic order. It was he who introduced this concept. The day what do we see? We see a country that is rampant with unemployment. We brought unemployment level down to 7%. And we felt that we were not doing enough. Today, unemployment has now risen to 11.5% and going to 12%. Government finances are in disarray. And the DLP, the DLP, do not have the answer to reduce unemployment. Our economy today is in junk. Poverty level has risen all across my constituency. Old people cannot get their homes repaired. Persons who are suffering go to the hospital and day after day have to wait long hours in the casualty. Number of people die in the hospital without proper document from the hospital, we have a problem in this country. So Sir Lloyd's statement is relevant. How did we get into this mess? How did we get into this mess? We have to ask ourselves the question, and where are we going? Where are we going? So what do we do from here? What it is that we must do? I want to say to you, comrades, that we have to look at our conscience. The people are not wrong. We do not blame you. I do not want you to take it hard on yourself. It's the government that you have elected. It's the government. If you do not elect an enlightened, I want you to listen to what I'm saying. You must elect an enlightened, disciplined, and competent set of people who will put us back into the position that we were in by 2007. We have to restore the country's economy. We have to build back the social system. We have to provide better governance in this country. 
we have to ensure that confidence is restored. And that's what it is. A new BLP government and the Mayor Amor Motley will restore the fiscal order. We will stop the printing of money. We will bring a new approach to business and investment. We will stimulate private capital and inflows. And of course, we will set up a foreign account for Barbados living abroad. It is rather needed. There are a number of Barbados that want to save in Barbados and help their country. Where are we with it? A new Barbados Labour Party administration will restore the sectoral policies in tourism, agriculture, manufacturing, and of course, the international business. And talking about agriculture, we are in the heart of St. George. We are in the heart of the agriculture zone. We have to restore the sugar industry. We have to bring back all urban lands back into production. We have to restore the, the Scotland district. We have to give agriculture incentive because agriculture is incentive driven. We have to do that. We have to encourage agricultural co-ops all across Barbados. And the Barbados Labour Party government will stop predial larceny once and for all in this country. We have to encourage every family when Owen Arthur in 2007 said to you that everybody must get out there and plant, some of you did not take that seriously. But we have to encourage families across this Barbados to bring pets into their homes. Give every child a pet. Give every child an animal. Give every child a task to do agricultural produce, to produce them. We have to do it. We have to start this thing of production in our country. I am saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, that we have an educated society, but we have to do more practical work. We must re rebuild hope for the youth. We heard what the young person said tonight, that we must rebuild hope in this country for the young people. We must restore our relations in the CARICOM and in the Commonwealth. We must restore the social partnership to its glory. Members talk about the union. We saw what has happened to the union. The union has lost its way. And we have to restore confidence in the social partnership again. But you know something, ladies and gentlemen? A new Barbados Labour Party government. We started it in 2007. Not continued. Modernize the civil service. And its relation to the political directorate. The civil service is in badly in need of reform. Too much government. We talk about too much government. I saw in today's paper, one retired attorney general spoke about two, a large cabinet. It's not only large cabinet. Every minister of government has a consultant. And you're paying consultant $10,000 per month. That's where you've got to start. Reduce the consultants. Reduce all the governance. You have for the very first time 21, 21 ministers, six of which are in the Senate. You, we never had that sort of thing before. So we are saying that there's too much governance and we must rely on the private sector. The problem of too much governance is one that we must not oversight. The government is too large. Every time this debate comes up in Parliament, I always say to, I say to the government, your government is too large. The government is too large. We have to reduce the size of government first because it is unwieldy, and of course the Prime Minister does not have a full affair of the whole cabinet. The Prime Minister does not understand sometimes where his ministers are. There are too many. He does not see them. So we have to reduce the size of cabinet. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that the situation must be looked at carefully. But you know, the situation is in the Barbados Labour Party Manifesto of 2013. You must read it. We can save this country. We can save this economy. We can, and with God's help and guidance, we will, under the, under the leadership of Mayor Abba Motley. Thank you very much. <laughs>